I can't see anything. So they're still working on it. We're here <laughs> yeah. a little bit early. We are. And I think if you can see that behind us, I walk around it. By the looks of it, that is the right rig <laughs> because we do have the reverse living area. We do. And the windows line up for that one to be the reverse That's window area. Awesome. So. It the looks awesome from going the to, outside. The yes, the dogs want to see too. So I we're, can't. That's like the glare is killing me. We're going to be doing a walkthrough soon. We're going to go ahead and get our paperwork ready. Too and we light will, sensitive. We'll have you walk <gasps> through with us when we do our walkthrough. Yeah. Exciting. We're excited. We're Finally here. here. Alright. You got two sets of keys here on this key ring. Purple key is your entry door. Gray key does your slam latch locks on your compartment baggage doors. Nice. And then you got a standard 751 key. That's gonna do your front lock and maybe one lock on the other side. That's a bug catching, keep the mosquitoes out at night. Huh. Your steps, bottom one first. And the whole thing. Oh, Very cool. Okay. Really easy. Nice. Any questions with the door? No. no, it looks good. Step on in, we'll start inside, work our way back out. If you have any okay. questions, just stop. Oh, it's beautiful. We're going to start right here at your main control panel. Okay. Very top of this panel here gives you your gauge. That's going to have your gauges for your fresh water tank, battery, etc. Very left of the panel here says battery. If I hit that button, you can see these lights light up over here giving you your battery gauge. Oh, nice. If I move over to my fresh, that's the onboard portable drinking water. There's two ways to get water on board. You can either fill the portable tank and bring the water with you or hook straight up to a connection. Black one, that's your sewage. And then gray and galley. So you have two gray tanks on board, I believe. Oh, okay. We'll figure that out when we get outside. Ceiling light switch here. So this does your ceiling lights throughout most of the trailer. Nice. Pendant light does those two LEDs over the island. Nice. Okay. Awesome. And then you do have a white flood light on the outside of the trailer over here. So okay. that's what one of these, if it says flood, that's what that is. Okay. And then you have a step light. Cool. Sweet. Slide yeah. switches here. So you have three slides and then an awning switch. This one does your bedroom slide behind me. Wouldn't hurt to label them, maybe get a label maker. Yeah, yeah. I have one. <laughs> this does your main slide. I'll bring this one in just to show you how it operates. The nice thing about these slides is you can stop them any way you want. So if you just needed to put it out halfway to grab something out of the fridge, you could. Like I can stop it wherever I want, just let go of the switch. Just know that if you stop it halfway, it's not creating a perfect seal anymore. So if it was raining, water wow. would dribble in. So it's gotta be all the way in or all the way out to create that seal. But once it's all the way in here, it's gonna click. That's just the mechanism underneath telling you we're all the way in. It does the same thing when you put it out. Awning, when we get outside, I'll run that all the way out for you, show you how that works, but it's as easy as hitting the switch. Cool. Below this panel here, you've got your thermostat. This is a Dometic thermostat. This runs your furnace and your AC. This is your little remote. To turn this on, it's this bottom button here. It lights up, it's got a little passcode. I think from the factory, it's all zeros. Now you could go through and change that if you'd like. Light here should do the light on the front of the trailer that shines down onto your bed so mm -hmm. at night you can see what you're doing. Leveler, so I can get in here. We can actually auto level from right here. Oh, we can retract oh, nice. jacks, extend jacks, everything from right there. Bedroom slide here, so if I click that, I can start bringing the bedroom slide in or out. So like I said, it's kind of nice if you were walking around the trailer at night or if you got to a campsite late and you don't have a spotter, you know, you could take this around the trailer, do everything from right there. Hmm main slide and then if i hit next here it takes you into the kitchen slide and awning very good so you can operate everything from here to turn it off just hold it down and then in the manual bag wherever that is in here it should have a charger for it oh cool so a usb charger so if this thing ever dies you just got to charge it up got it got a nice pantry again it's got one of those yes. motion lights i already set oh, it to nice. motion oh nice you. down here this is your power converter box so this is taking that 50 amp power we're plugged into outside and converting it to 12 volt to run all your 12 volt goodies there's two electrical systems on board every trailer and you got your 110 system just like you'd have at home with your breakers and then you have your 12 volt system like you'd have in a car or boat and they're all labeled. You do have some storage under these okay. for cards or placemats, whatever. 
Because they're, they're wood blind shades. Oh, but nice. When you operate them, all you got to do is wrap from the bottom. Oh, nice. Up. Oh, that's like the ones we had in the house. Those it, are awesome. Exactly. Yeah. They're very oh. nice. All I, my only recommendation is always use two hands. Two hands. Even yeah. on the right. smaller ones, it seems silly, but if you go crooked, you can bust the string and then they won't work properly. But I really like these blinds. They're my favorite yeah. they've used so far. I love far. those like that. Yeah. You've got your theater seating here. Your controls for these are these two plastic handles in here. Okay. You just pull up on those and it'll recline. Mm -hmm. What they call a tri-fold sleeper sofa. You just pull these back cushions off, find a home for them. Grab the bottom of the sofa here, pull up and out. Hold your legs down. And come back here, flip this last cushion down. Boom, you got a bed. Oh, sweet. Nice. Okay. It's all foam, very comfortable. Uh, beats the old air mattresses, beats the old oh, yeah. Um, yeah. spring pull-out sleeper sofas. What's nice is you are left with an inch or two of space down here for a couple small pillows, maybe a blanket, if you had guests. Cool. But real easy to use. You shouldn't have any issues with these. They've been on for about five years. Not a lot of moving parts. It's a very comfortable couch, too. Usually it's one or the other. Yes. Yeah, it's very, very, very nice couch. There's a light switch over here to the left that does these lights here above that you couldn't reach. Uh -huh. The ones that you can reach, there's a button right in the middle of the lights. Nice. Awesome, great space. Any questions so far? This has been, this, this is, awesome. is great. Okay, so TV's here. Big remote is TV remote. Medium size remote does your stereo. Oh, the okay. very little guy is your fireplace. Oh, nice. With your TV, it is picking up about 40 channels off the rooftop antenna, so it's free TV. You don't have to plug in a cable or anything like that. Right here is your stereo remote. So stereo is a DVD player, CD, Bluetooth, all-in-one deal. It's kind of like your home theater, but I've got it on radio right now. The big thing to remember is you got these zone buttons. So zone one is these speakers inside, and zone two is your two speakers under your awning. So, you know, if you guys are at campsite and you're here dancing and getting ready and you forgot about those outside speakers, <laughs> your neighbors might not like it too much. But you can turn the inside set off, and now I just have the outside set on. And you can oh, yeah. Cr it's cranking oh, wow, out there. Yeah. So just be, be aware that you got them. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Don't be and when they're on, it shows a little two button up here, and when I turn one on, it shows one and two, so you can Done. see that they're on. Otherwise, your mode button's over here. We can go through the different modes. So when it says no link, that's the Bluetooth. So you'd have to find it on your phone, link up to it, and then it would say link OK, and you'd be able to play your music wirelessly. If I hit that button one more time, now it goes into HDMI arc, so whatever's playing over the TV will play through the stereo. If I hit it one more time, we got AV in, so it's actually got an auxiliary in on the front. You could plug in stuff, auxiliary in on the front. And I think we're back to uh, FM. It does have a USB charger on the front, so you can charge phones off of it. It'll mm -hmm. even play movies. I've heard if you have like a thumb drive mm -hmm. memory stick with movies on oh, it, very you cool. put, pop it in there, it'll start playing through the TV. Oh, nice. So it's pretty okay. slick. Yeah, it's, awesome. it's, it's a new, new Furion deal, and it works really well. Fireplace is down below that. It does have the remote. So right now it's just on for looks. It's not quite pumping out heat, but you, it obviously is a 1,500-watt space heater. You can hit the little temperature button. Now I could adjust the temp, so 72 or wherever you want to keep it, it'll kick on and off to keep keep it at that temperature. It does have a dimmer feature, so we can turn down the lights. Oh, if you were wow. watching a movie and you didn't want it too bright, distracting. Uh, heat buttons, so now we're actually going to turn the heat on. So right now it says zero, zero, that means no heat. If I hit that button one more time, see it says LL, that's low heat, and then H for high heat. And if I hit it one more time, now we're in thermostat control. Yes. So now it'll kick on and off to keep that heat there. And then timer, one hour, two hour. You could set it for six hours. You could finish watching your movie, go to bed, and this thing will shut off in the middle of the night so that way you're not fussing with it. Nice. Yeah, it's starting to, starting to heat up. Kind of smell burning that dust off. <laughs> fridge is here. It's a really nice fridge. Gives you full instructions on how to use this thing if you forget what I'm about to tell you, but it's real easy to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it needs to be adjusted. Adjust that, yeah. yeah. I'll have a tech look at that while you guys are okay. doing paperwork. 
residential microwave here works great. It's got the standard turntable. What's nice about this is it's not an RV microwave. This is a residential. So nice. the RV nice. microwaves are 800 watt, and this should be a true what 1200 watt residential. Excellent. Um, so yeah, it, it's going to actually you know boil water and, and make popcorn properly like it should. Nice. I know the popcorn button really well. Other than that, I'm not a huge. <laughs> we, we did test it. There you go. Good. Glass cooktop here folds back once and folds back again. Don't fold it any other way. You will mangle these hinges here. Yes. Yeah. Right here you've got your three stove controls. Your front burner puts out the most heat. It's like your main burner. Okay. To light it, just turn it to light and get your spark. All three burners light like that. Anytime you fill your propane tanks up front, one of the first things I would do is come in here and light a burner. It'll help bleed out any air that might have got, got trapped it. in the propane lines while you okay. filled them. We only have to run it for a few seconds, help you know, get any, any air out, but they work great. We do have some storage here underneath the sink that kind of goes down to your um, pass through storage yeah. down there. And then right here, you've got your medicine cabinet, kind of hard to see in here. That's and here, okay. the previous owners never set this up. This is your toilet oh. paper holder, oh. <laughs> so you can put that wherever you want it. Most okay. people. To be honest with you, we'll put it on the inside of this cabinet door. Yeah. That way oh. it keeps it dry. You know what? Good idea. Nice idea. And out of the way. Out of the way. Yep. Uh, good idea. Well, leave that in there for you. Shower, really the only thing you got to know here is that you do have the on and off on the shower head. And that's got for it. conserving hot water. Excellent. So you can turn it on here, wait for it to get hot, rinse, and then when you're ready to shampoo, you can shut it off at the shower head, shampoo, and then when you're ready for hot water again, it's waiting for you here and you're not fussing with it at the control. Mm -hmm. It does have a nice seat here on your skylight, so just make sure you lock these doors down for travel, because right? these are glass. If you Got don't, it. they'll bang around, you'll open the store, you'll have glass all over the place. Yeah, so to lock it, issue. it just clips on over this and clicks down, and now they can't go anywhere. Nice. But they are nice doors, it's a tri-pane. Oh, cool. And you can open it this way too, if it's easier to get in and out. Oh, very so good. Very nice. Our reception, let's see if I can get to an HD channel here. There we go. So yeah, oh, HD comes clean. in real clear. Nice. Uh, so the only other thing up here that's important is your booster switch. So you yeah, we're in the bedroom. Don't look. <laughs> it's a bag with some coffee mugs. Oh, and cool. Oh, awesome. You can maybe put whatever I don't know if whatever paperwork they have in here, but you can. Use Excellent. That. Thank okay. you. Oh, You're welcome, thank guys. You, Denise. Thank you. See this little green light? Right. There's a little button next to it. If I hit that button and turn that off, now it freezes your, you know, it doesn't necessarily freeze because we're outside, but it'll it'll kind of hinder your reception. Okay. Got it. So this needs to be on if you want to watch antenna. Now, if you happen to get a campsite with cable and you have a coax cord and you decide to hook the trailer mm -hmm. up to cable, this needs to be off because it shares the same uh, line coming in and it'll interfere with the cable connection got it. coming oh, okay. in. Got it. The only other thing you'd have to do if you hooked up to cable would hit menu on the TV remote, go over to channel and switch it from air to cable and got then it. do your auto scan. It would find all their local campground cable channels. I did that once in the UP at St. Ignace at the KOA. Mm. We went up there for a Mackinac weekend, and when we got up there Friday night, it thunderstormed all through until Sunday. So we were stuck oh, in my motorhome yes. all weekend, and I oh, happened to bring a coax cord. I have a long one that I brought. I up and turned out they had HBO, so we were watching Game of Thrones. Oh, nice. We were playing cards. Nice. It ended up being a great weekend. But, nice. Um, you know, just... Just so you know. But a lot of campgrounds have gotten away from having cable hookups, so it's kind of a rarity nowadays. It's kind of what I've found out. This just clips in like so and prevents the oh, TV from nice. banging cool. around. So make that part of your checklist. You strap down TVs. Mm -hmm. Last thing you want be to show up at the campsite and have this thing yeah. tilted and broken. Yeah. That would be a way, real bummer. I'll put that remote in here for you. Cool. Yeah. And you have USB ports in there for charging phones, 110. Um, Oh, it's prep for a washer dryer. That's what yes. that other breaker was. I was wondering what that oh, was. Right. weird washer breaker. Dryer. I couldn't read it because it was sideways, but it was washer dryer. So you're prepped for it. It would be one of those all-in-one splendid yeah. washer dryer deals, but um, this comes out obviously and it would sit right in there and you got your water and, and dryer vent location. So you'd be able to hook it up there. And then you should have storage under this bed here. Yeah. In other words, get up, John. <laughs> This emergency escape window, I have to show you how this works oh, yes. by law. Okay. This red switch here, you just unlock, unlock, push. It's on a hinge. A tight one they're new, and they've probably never been done, but yeah, you could wow. Got it. get out of here. Right. would recommend one of those rope escape ladders. You yeah, yes. and, that's a long way down. Yep. <laughs> so you just got to grab it. 
on. I might have to open it. It is a normal window, otherwise. Mm. Oh, there you go. That's nice. Very nice window. Yeah, it is nice. Probably have the windows in here. Yeah. With these shades, you can definitely darken the. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, I want to. I want to get these for my houseboat. Well, when we go up to you know up more north, it's like in the in Alaska and stuff. We've got daylight all the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Twenty four hours. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be able to. Yep. Darken and they it sell up. like foam blocks you can yep. squeeze yeah. in there to keep the light out and yep. different things. I know a long time back we had that one that looked like a pillow. It's just yeah, poof, yeah, yeah that's what it is now. Right. Yeah, yeah. another foam, yeah. Yeah, okay, and the strap on the TV in here. I'll get it. All right. A little awkward, just like the other one. You got to pull the TV out. I'm gonna put these remotes in the storage for okay. you. The TV will turn off when we unplug the trailer. Oh, the storage back there too. There is a little liquor cabinet. Nice. See, this strap doesn't have to be too tight. It's just got preventing it, it from, from walking flopping itself out. out. Got yeah. it. All right, we're good. Let's move outside. Cool. Oh, where's my? I look like this. You guys know what? I'll run the wall thing this way. Okay. That. Okay. Got it. Got it. Here it goes. Oh, got it. You want that hanging straight up and down with the ground like that. What I mean by that is if it keeps going with the awning, it'll tend to take that out and wrap it around. Now it's oh, too hot. So you yeah. want to bring that in a little bit to where so that's hanging straight up and down with the got ground, it. and that's a comfortable spot for the awning. Perfect. Oh, What's good. also nice about it is you can come over here, step on these steps, grab this bar, bring it down. Now we've got it adjusted for rain runoff. Oh, good. Oh, okay. Nice. Awning. Yes. Awning's on angles, so now water will run off. You could do that on both sides if you want to bring the whole awning closer to you. But it's nice. Just treat it like a tent. If it gets wet, make sure you put it out the next day in the sun. Let it dry out. Got it. Put it away for good. Also, we'll get mildewy and gross. Got your bike rack here. With this, you've got to pull these two pins, and it drops down. Have you guys pulled it out yet? No. So you just pull that pin out there, do the same thing over here. This swings down, pop your pin back through. You might have to, you might have to lift up on that a little bit. Right, kind of, you gotta shimmy it. There you go. Yeah, now you can pull this pin here. Oh, there. So that's what holds your bikes. Oh, now, you, okay. now you could lay your bikes up there, strap them down to it, and you're good to go. Nice. Okay. You do have a ladder. This is a full walk uh, walkable roof. You got to imagine this is all aluminum studs, and then it's an aluminum welded roof, so it can hold yeah. some weight up there. Right here is your uh, fresh water tank fill. So this is how you fill your portable water. You just shove a, a drinking water hose in there. Once it's full, it'll start spewing back out at you. It's pretty rudimentary, but um, it's about that. <laughs> Down on here, that's your fresh water tank drain. It's that big white valve. Oh, yeah, that's it. a power drain. So you pull that, and it'll just start pumping out of there. Got it. Would be smart to do if you don't want to take all that water with you. That right. is a lot of weight. So if you guys don't want it today, pull that valve as you're leaving here, and it'll drain out as you leave. Okay. So you do have two gray tanks, one black tank. You can see they put a sticker here for gray tank. That's just telling you that this is where it's coming out and there's a valve for it right here. Okay. It's kind of hidden back here behind that. So that's your kitchen gray water. That's okay. your waste sink water from the kitchen. This is your main dump out. And then this is your other two valves here for your black tank and your bathroom gray tank. But everything comes so out of the same So it's just kitchen grease. Right. Okay, got it. So before you close everything up, most dump stations have a water hose you can use. Come over here to this caution input. Mm -hmm. Take that off, screw the hose in there, and that's your black tank flush. So that's going to help flush out the black tank, any solids or toilet paper that are stuck in there. You can let that run for a couple minutes, unplug that, close up your tanks, and you're good to go. Pretty good. In uh, here is your furnace outlet, so hot air will come out of here when the furnace is on. And then this is your hot water heater. Yeah. You do have a light up here. Oh, nice. It wouldn't hurt to you have that label maker. Maybe put yeah. a winterized port right here. So yeah. That way yeah. You know. 
you know, if you had a few drinks and you got to the campsite, it might be easy to accidentally hook your water hose up to the black tank flush or to the winterize, yeah. and that wouldn't be good. If you accidentally hooked up a hose to the black tank flush, yeah, as you can imagine, you'd start filling the black tank with water. Once that's full, it's going to go nowhere but up through your roof vent. You'd have sewage all over your trash. So make sure you don't. That's why they put this caution down. Yeah, yeah. This is your city water in, so your permanent water in. I do recommend a regulator for that, a water pressure regulator. Yeah, I do have one. So yeah, use that. Solar charge here, so you do have a 10 amp solar charge on the hood. You can run a little solar charger, trickle charge the battery. Yep. Good. Satellite in right here. Oh, okay. Cool. And then this is your battery disconnect. So anytime you're not using the trailer for a long period of time, hit that switch. And what it does is it kills all parasitic draw from the battery back. Nice. So, you know, your propane leak detector is always on, your radio display is always on. Those, those little things that would kill your battery over time. And then right here, you've got a high pressure spray hose and that has a normal garden hose attachment. You can put any, you know, spray nozzle on it that you want. Awesome. And then right here is your auto level system. It's the ground control. They give you full instructions on how to use it here, but it's a pretty easy system to use. To turn it on, hit the on button over here. When it turns on, it says ready, jacks are down. So I've got all the jacks down right now. Basically, protocol would just be hit auto level once you get where you're going, nice. once you got it off the truck. You got two propane tanks here, two 30 pounders, they're both full. And then up here is your regulator for the tanks. So you can see it's green, oh, nice. it's got gas. If it's red, it's empty. Got it. And then this is the valve for it. So when it's facing this way, it means it's fading, feeding off this tank first. Once this tank empties out, it's gonna automatically internally switch to the other side. Oh, cool. You could do this, and now it's gonna feed off the other tank first, then come to this one. Right. Do not leave it in the middle. Ah. It'll feed off both tanks till about halfway, and then it will freeze up the regulator, and you can blow out the O-rings oh, in the geez. regulator. So one way or the other. Got it. There is no gauge for the tanks, but they do sell aftermarket gauges out there. You, you can purchase. Cool. Right here is a nice light for hitching up at night. And then you got your two docking light switches. Those are your LED lights on the front of the trailer. Oh, nice. LED strip there. And then you've got this nice uh, yeah. light that shines down on your hitch so you can see what you're doing at night. In here, you got your brand new interstate battery in a vented box. I do recommend pulling this out in the winter and putting it on a trickle charger if you can. Right. Otherwise, there's not a whole lot of maintenance involved with that. Spare tires in here. You got one of those motion lights in here. This TV mount is the same mounting bracket that's in your bedroom. Mm -hmm. So you can pull that TV out on the swivel, <laughs> pop the whole mount and TV out, unconnect it from the wires, bring it out here, and you'll have a swivel mount with your bedroom TV. Nice. Sweet. And then they give you power and antenna <laughs> for that, so you can that. watch TV outside. Helpful. Very cool. Yeah. And power here for you know your oh. margarita blender or whatever. Right here you got your slam latches, so don't be afraid to let it slam. It does have the magnet catches on the side here that hold it up against the wall. Nice. So we're going to interrupt this video for a brief moment to fill you in on what happened next. Uh, we were towing a U-Haul trailer along with us, and it was full of stuff that we discovered that we needed and a lot that we didn't need. Uh, we didn't document any of this. The frustration level got really high. Uh, I do talk about this in a little bit as far as how you need to pare down. Uh, but to be perfectly honest, uh, the undercarriage was jam-packed full. It's still pretty full. Uh, we had boxes piled in every possible place you could pile them. And it took us about two days to kindly, finally sort through things. Kindly, finally? Oh, well. Anyways, uh, so actually today, uh, nice rainy day we have today as I'm doing this, Don is going to be reorganizing some of the shelves still. And uh, we will get into the other's carriage probably as soon as it dries out. Uh, but what wound up happening is it took quite a while to load all that stuff in. Uh, I took the trailer back, and we then came back, hooked up, and pulled the first pole. Traffic around ANS RV service was insane. It was a very scary situation. A lot of road construction. Roads narrowed down to single lanes. GPS telling me to turn left. And it was impossible to turn left. We had to go right and hope we didn't get stuck somewhere um, and reroute. Finally got to the uh, to the site, and we'll go ahead and uh, pick it up there at Cottonwood Campground in Lansing, Michigan. We are now at Lansing 
Cottonwood Campground. And uh, I hate to say it, but because there was photo evidence, I gotta have to admit to a rookie mistake of not swinging wide when you need to swing wide. Thank goodness there was uh, no serious damage. But as we were pulling in, the gentleman told us to swing as close as we could uh, to the side of this road. And as I did, I ran the RV over a boulder. Not a rock, a boulder. And uh, we were actually stuck. It, uh, we had to um, use the hydraulics to jack it up. They had to get a, a tractor and a chain to wrap around it to drag it out. Uh, thank goodness there was only photo evidence and not video evidence. Uh, very embarrassed. Uh, the first drive, however, went extremely well. Truck performed amazingly. Um, I just, I've got a lot to learn. And uh, you guys are gonna see all my mistakes along the way as long as I have a wife that has a camera at her beck and call. So um, we are in our site and we'll show you around the site a little bit. Beautiful site here. Um, and uh, Don's in there now making hot dogs and we are up to our eyeballs in junk. Rule number two when you downsize is pare down everything you think that you need to take with you and then cut that in half. And then probably gonna wanna cut that in half again. Uh, we took way too much stuff and we've been pared down a couple of times. So over the next few days, we're gonna be putting things away. Hopefully we'll be able to give you a tour inside. Don't think I want to give you a tour right at the moment. I'm not even sure we're gonna to sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's that bad, it's that bad. Okay, but uh, beautiful rig, beautiful day. Uh, only a few minor hiccups here and there, but other than that, we are very happy to be starting this. Our first night in our, in our Cougar. And that's about it. See you in the morning. So this is where we're going to end this one. In the next episode, stay tuned. We are going to get a chance to look around Cottonwood Campground in Lansing and see some of the other sites of Lansing, Michigan. Uh, we will be continuing our travels through the state, soggy state at the moment. Uh, but we will be continuing on. If you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you really like it, go ahead and hit the notification bell so it will let you know every time we post a new video. We are posting weekly uh, every Saturday, or excuse me, it'll actually show up every Sunday at around 2 o'clock. I don't know what time zone. I think it was Eastern, but I have no clue. Uh, so 2 o'clock, figure thereabouts, plus or minus three hours due to the time changes. And uh, you'll be able to see our furthering adventures of Atka, Sierra, Dawn, and I. So, uh, keep watching, and we hope to see you on the road. Remember, if you like this video and you are not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you really like the video, make sure that you hit the notification bell, and that will let you know Oh, we got a dog drinking water and that's part of our life <laughs> dog drinking water <laughs>